Hey YouTube, Mucklick here, and I have been trying out Heal Mech today. As many of you may have seen, I've recently done a bunch of videos where I've been reviewing every support in the game and spending at least a day, you know, a play session, three to five hours playing them and then doing a review video and my thoughts on that support. Some of them I had played before. Heal Mech was actually, I was really excited when they announced Mechanist because I love pet builds, I love supports, and this is both. And when they announced this pre-EOD, I played this for the, you know, most of EOD and then kind of went back to my Druid afterward. Let's, first off, just to show that uh, I know what I'm talking about. I am going to run in here. This is a standard heal mech setup right here. We have also got Harriers on all the gear, Rune of the Monk, Relic of the Monk, uh, Sigil of Concentration and Transference, and these skills. This is an extreme damage field, not something that every healer can stand in at all. And also, uh, many of them can't do it with Harriers gear because it's very glassy. We're going to try it. So we're going to run in here, throw the mech, jump in, have the mech do its pulsing stuff and do this, tap the shield skills just to get protection up, and we're gonna hit this right here, and then we're just gonna fire a healing cooldown with the elixir gun, and do this, and let's get some barrier from the barrier signet, and let's fire the mortar kit heal into the ground, and tap the shield skill for prod again, and once again, use the med kit skills, and we've come full circle. Once again, use the shield kit skills, and our big barrier is coming off of cooldown right now. And let's use this. And these aren't back up yet. And, ooh, getting a little spicy here. Getting a little spicy. There we go. And we're stable once again. Okay, so, uh, staying full health. All these lovely boons. Protection, alacrity, regen, vigor, some resolution, fury, 25 might, swiftness. The quickness is coming from the console to simulate being grouped with a competent person that gives quickness. Now, let's talk about the build. First off, Engineer got shortbow recently. How well does it work with mech? My findings are no. The reason is because when you use short bow instead of mace shield you lose access to regen and vigor you also lose prot from the shield skills swap that to the short bow you gain prot on the short bow so that's an even trade-off prot for prot you gain might you didn't need it you already had it you lose regen you lose vigor you can get some regen and vigor from infusion bomb but not enough. Now, there are ways for Scrapper, I'm going to go to my Scrapper build for a second, to recover that lost region through the tool belt. Mech trades tool belt for a giant robot and does not have that. So Mechanist cannot easily recover the loss of regen. That may change in the coming patch. I am recording this on March 12th. There is a patch on March 19th where they are messing around with automated medical response so that it provides more regen. However, I don't know if that is going to work because there are some traits on Mechanist that refer to the tool belt stuff. And some of them work. Like it just, insta it'll be like, oh, whenever you use tool belt skill, you do a heal in the nearby area. And for a Mechanist, it's whenever you use a mech skill, it does a heal in the area. Okay, it just, it just ch changed it. However, this skill, for example, grant protection to nearby allies when you use a heal skill. Well, every, every engineer healer I know of is going to use medkit. When you use medkit as a normal engineer healer, it moves the heal skill to F1 because this button is a kit. It's like a weapon swap. So the self heal is right here. See, it has protection on it. However, a support engineer, a support mechanist, sorry, ha the F1 is punch it in the face. And punch it in the face doesn't provide the prot. So this trait just goes poof. It's gone. So this does nothing for heal mech. Would love to see that fixed, but I don't know. I, I, they might just be like, no, that's intended, you know? So heal mech technically doesn't have a self heal. Hi, Noxy. Anyway, in any case, uh, it operates fine without it. You saw I just uh, rolled around in an extreme damage field while I was in Harrier gear, which is the glass healing gear, and it was completely fine. So that said, it, it's not really needed, but because of those reasons I just gave, I do not know if them tweaking automated medical response will affect the mechanist at all. The heal mech after that patch comes out or if it is only going to affect the scrapper. So with that in mind, at least right now at this time, I feel like short bow is too much of a loss losing, you lose vigor uptime, mildly annoying. Losing regen uptime, that's huge. For those that don't main healer, you may be surprised to hear that regen is often your highest healing output. Every second of the fight, regen is healing all, all the people in your group. It's just ticking and ticking and ticking. If the boss does red circles under everybody and you all have to scatter and explode and then come back together, regen's going that whole time. You know, some guy just runs to the wrong end of the room or whatever, regen's ticking. So it is often your highest source of healing on a fight. 
So losing that is losing a massive uptime of your highest healing source, which is very painful. So cannot. those are the reasons I don't recommend short bow right now unless something changes or I'm just flat out wrong about something. Now, moving on to the actual kit itself for those who have not played Heal Mechanist. I, a couple of things, it is one of the easiest to play. When things are going smoothly, I am going to adjust the environment. I'm going to turn the damage field off and I am going to respawn the last golem. In a normal fight, you will run in you're going to press two every time it lights up. Four and five, you'll just tap them one time in order to get protection. And then you might use F2, and then you always use F3. So two on cooldown, F3 on cooldown, four and five on cooldown. Look at these lovely bones. They are just building up. Now, when things start to get spicy, you might need to go into medkit, fire some healing combos, go into elixir gun, put down a healing spot on the ground. You could go into mortar kit. You got another healing spot on the ground in that kit too. But when things are going really well, you just bonk, 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 and everything is great. So very easy to learn, but you do need to know what tricks you have for those spicy moments to be able to handle them. So that's, you know, totally, totally fine. So easy gameplay loop. It is a top tier healer. What uh, what all tools do we have? We've got access to Barrier Burst, which provides the Fury and a lot of the Might. It also does a whole lot of Barrier. We have access to Crisis Zone, which is Aegis Stability Protection and Alacrity. The Shield Skills provide Prot. Also, you can double tap any Shield Skill to do a CC. It sucks that we have to burn the Shield Skills to apply Prot because we don't have them for when we need to actually do, I don't know, a block because it's a shield, however, it, and also CC. So usually you're, you're burning them for prot, but then if the boss happens to have a break bar, you would double tap it instead for the CC. Medkit gives you access to cleansing healing skills. They recently tweaked Bandage Blast. It feels much nicer to use now, just a huge heal and a cone in front of you. The Elixir Gun has good cleansing. Uh, for example, this green Blarg here actually does up to 25 cleanses in front of you. It is an insanely powerful cure conditions tool of everything in front of you. Also got the Super Elixir, uh, and on the Mortar Kit, we have got the Elixir Shell, both of which are healing fields in an area for any time you're just having a little trouble keeping up with the heals, you can slam those down. And those are on pretty short cooldowns too. Uh, 20 seconds, it was it, uh, 24 seconds and I think 16 respectively. Yeah, this one's almost back up. A lot of combos access too. You've got Barrier Signet for Barrier and Shift Signet is one of the greatest oh crap buttons in the game. As long as it's off cooldown, any buffs you get also go to your pet. You see that? I only got four might. He got eight, because he got my four and copied to him and his own four. Now, that's really, really nice. And for those that don't know why, here's the reason. Ranger, some if they're unless they're nature magic, Ranger, if they have a pet out and they're not nature magic, let's say you got a ranger in a group and there's five people plus a pet. Boons usually hit five targets. The pet doesn't get boons. So the pet is much weaker than when you might test it in the testing room. If you have nature magic, it gets the same boons on me or copy to my pet thing that shift signet does, but usually DPS rangers don't bring that. Usually that's a support ranger thing. So this is actually really nice that that's just baked into this. Also, every time a ranger pet swaps, it dumps all the boons. So they, they go into the dumpster on boons in that regard as well. But this cures conditions. It is a stun break. It is a teleport, it is movement speed, and it gives the pet a copy of your boon. So this is often on the bar for every mechanist you'll ever see. It is just really, really loaded and really good. Barrier Signet also blocks enemy projectiles. Really good on Dagda for stopping those enemy bullets. It is, you can block things coming directly at you, but Barrier Signet's the only one that will block in an area. And it is short enough cooldown, you can use it every time Dagda fires the bullets all over the place. So it's really nice to have in the kit as well. Now, uh, I've said a lot of fact things and a lot of good things about the build. What are some things I consider negative about it? First, minor things. Except for Infusion Bomb, there's no swiftness in the build. So you have like half of time on swiftness, which honestly, mildly annoying. Not a big deal, but it's there. You have good cleansing, stuff like that. Boon application. Fury, it feels good to provide on this build. You're already using Barrier Burst every time it comes up. Not a big deal. Might, feels easy to provide on this build. Barrier Burst provides a lot of it, and then him punching provides the rest. Every time he lands a punch, might. 20 seconds of might on your group. So very easy to keep might up. Vigor and regen, easy to keep up as long as you just hit this button every time it, co it comes off cooldown. It gives vigor regen and a little bit of barrier to your group, okay? It's great. It's great. So you got all those. Now, the only boon that feels awful with this class, in my opinion, is protection. You want your healer to have regen and protection. On this guy, I have to use this reflects project oh, is it reflects projectiles and as a CC also if you double tap it. You have to put it on cooldown for a six seconds of prod. This blocks everything, stuns anyone that hits you, and you can double tap it to do a CC. You have to put it on projectile for, uh, on, uh, sorry, you have to put it on cooldown for six seconds of prod. This 
is your only source of group stability, your only source of group Aegis, and it helps with alacrity, it's not required, and you have to put it on cooldown for 11 seconds of prot. So, if no one else in the group is giving prot, as near as I can tell, you have to let the prot slip to give a stability or Aegis on demand. Uh, yes, it is also a stun break, and it also is a group condition cleanse too. F2 is loaded, perhaps too loaded. It is a group stun break, a group condition cleanse, alacrity, prot, stability, and Aegis. Now, the alacrity is just helping provide alacrity. You have lots of skills that provide alacrity. Uh, for example, if I do this, I just did the skill over here, there's alacrity. If I do this skill here, there's more alacrity. It just, it, the, the way that this class works is when you give someone barrier, you give them alacrity. So it just, uh, it just works that way. But this skill is the only way that you can give your group stability. Now it's on a 30 second cooldown, that's acceptable. 30 seconds or less cooldown on a group wide stability for a healer is enough to get through a lot of content in the game that requires a stability or it's nice to have it. Tempest and Druid are very similar. Tempest has, I think, one, one source of group stability unless they're using Staff, which is a shout, which is similar to this. The Druid, largely Glyph of a quality, I think, has one source of group stability unless they burn their Glyph of the Stars, which is their biggest revive move. They're not going to often do that unless they uh, are just confident in their party. So this one, they got one source and they have to waste it for prot. Scrapper with this was, had a similar issue. If I go over to the Scrapper build, I have got my, my shield skills here and they provide a little prot. My self heal provides a little bit of prot. Remember, Mechanist doesn't have a self heal with medkit. And the function gyro, my ability to res people gives prot. Or if I'm using Shortbow, the Aegis, the only Aegis Scrapper has gives prot. So, pick one. Do you want to lose your ability to self-heal in emergencies, lose your ability to revive in emergencies, or lose the ability to give your group Aegis in emergencies? Which one do you want to keep? Sacrifice the other two. That's Scrapper protection. And on Mechanist, it's your two shield skills which are both CCs and one of them is a block and one of them is a reflect projectiles and also your group stability and your group ages. So everything else feels really good on this, but providing prot and sacrificing that only stability or ages felt really awful. It was a breath of fresh air when I found out I had someone in my group that was actually helping a little with prot up time and I was able to save the crisis zone for when we really needed it and not burn it in those moments just for boon up time. So I would love to see the prot, honestly, on all three of these. The shield skills and the crisis zone, I would love to see that somewhere else. Like, even if it's boring and you just slap it on barrier burst like you did the Fury, that's honestly the same as what you did for the Scourge. They put the prot on the sand shade and the, every 20 seconds they hit the sand shade and everyone gets 20 seconds of prot. Very boring, but they're not having to waste a bunch of skills when they're not needed in that regard. I would love to see that because as it stands, prot feels awful, but everything, all the other boon upkeep on this build and IMO, feels great. It's wonderful. Do you have Comeback Cure? I do. Comeback Cure can apply regen to an ally uh, when you remove a condition from them. So it's great on some fights and on other fights it is... it doesn't help at all because some fights don't have conditions at all. Oh, you were talking about because I mentioned the short... if you have short bow that you don't have full regen uptime. Yeah, so I consider this very nice to have but not something to be relied on because bosses will just punch you in the face sometimes for 20k, just power. It doesn't have anything. And then not having regen, you know, during those boss fights, Veil Guardian hurts. And especially if you're doing the don't stand in green strat, there's like no condies on that fight. You don't want to be reliant on comeback cure for regen. Like you, you just, that's, that's no good. So yeah, comeback cure is fantastic to have. Really good in World v. World too, but not something you should rely on for your build. That's that's kind of like when people tell me like, oh yeah, I've got those boons covered. I've got chaos aura. I, I don't think you know how chaos aura works. Like you give someone chaos aura, then they have to get hit. Then after the hit, they get swiftness or regen or prot, I believe. So there's a one in three chance that they get the boon that you think they're going to get, and then it wears off after a couple of seconds. Chaos Aura does not help that much with boon up. It's nice to have. It doesn't help that much with boon upkeep, though. In any case, the last negative I would say about Heal Mechanist is the re revive potential, which is to say none. I was running some stuff with Pugs earlier. I would occasionally stop to, uh, you know, th there were there was true newbies in the group and some veterans in there as well. And when people would go down, the first few times I tried to just get them up myself, I ran up and started saving them. I still had the mech pumping out some barrier, but other people started to get chunked really, really bad. And I was like, guys, I need you to do the reviving. If I've stopped healing, more people are going down. This is getting worse. I, I, I need the DPS to revive. And I, 
you know, it, it, it made me miss when I play, you know, Scourge or even Firebrand or Signal Mercy or my Druid where I could just like, I had a cooldown, but periodically I could just go save that guy and then go back to healing. So that's something this class doesn't have. Now, this class can pump a lot of barrier. I don't know if it would be fair for it to have a revive. I'm not saying they should change it. I'm just informing you. If you decide to play this class, current weaknesses, not full up time on swiftness, you doing prot feels bad. You only have one Aegis and one stability and they're the same button. So if you use one, you use both. And if you use that button to keep protection up, you lose them in that way too, which feels bad. And, but lots of barrier, lots of weird tools with the different kits you've got, because you've got med kit, elixir gun, mortar, and your mace shield, and you've got no revive potential. Other than that, it's a fantastic build. It was used in many of the world first kills of Harvest Temple CM. It's still used in a lot of high-end content. And as long as your group isn't going down state constantly, in some ways, uh, it's almost an easier to play heal brand. And what I mean by that is heal brand also doesn't have the revive potential of some of the classes that revive the best. But if you've got a good group, like the heal brand is better, the better the group is. Like, because it, it's like, if you give someone Aegis and they stand in something stupid and then it uses up the Aegis, then they die from the hit the Aegis was meant for. You know, it's like the more skilled the group is, the more the heal brand looks good. Heal mat can be similar to that, but almost like an easier to play one with a few less tools than uh, the heal brand does. But yeah, great build, easy to play. I've gone over the cons, I've gone over the pros, and uh, also I do very good, very respectable healing and also barrier output. Um, even though I don't have a self-heal skill, self -heal skill with this setup because of the uh, mechanist not having a tool belt combined with medkit, which puts your heal on your tool belt, I was able to stand in an extreme damage field with glass cannon healer gear and get through it just fine. So yeah, ca it's capable of very solid numbers and uh, good utilitarian stuff. It's not perfect in, in my opinion, but yeah, I, I think I'm talking in circles now, so that's good. So yeah, with that, that's my experience on heal mech and my thoughts on it, fresh in my head. And if you got any questions, problems, thoughts, concerns, or comments on how I did it wrong, put it in the comments. I will fight you there.